Today on Ag Etc., we start with Eric Atkinson introducing us to the Hodson family, one of six couples honored as the 2017 class of Kansas Master Farm Families in recognition of their leadership in agriculture, environmental stewardship, and service to their communities. This statewide award program is in its 91st year and is sponsored by K-State Research and Extension and Kansas Farmer Magazine. Next, we see how to stay safe using an emergency brake stop on your horse. And we'll end with why relationships are so important when it comes to selling calves. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. You'd be hard-pressed to find a more well-rooted farm family than the Hodsons of Rice County. Operating along the Little Arkansas River, Kendall Hodson is the fourth generation of his family to farm just to the south and east of Little River. It's a family farming legacy that goes back 146 years. He still farms the land where his great-grandfather spent his first winter in Kansas in a dugout along the river. Melinda was raised in Dodge City. Where her family farmed, she now manages her family's farmland holdings in six southwest Kansas counties. Currently, they now run a 3,500-acre crops and cattle operation, with eldest son Tanner now a full-time partner in the farm. Notably, Kendall and Melinda are the third generation of this family to be honored as a master farm family, following Kendall's parents, Howard and Ruth, and his grandfather, E.H. Hodgson, who was a member of the very first master farmer class in 1927. Yeah, my grandfather was the first class in 1927, and there was a few more of them. They did not have the, the wives involved at that point in time. He was a, he was a prominent man. I look, I look and admire my grandfather as my father, too, and so uh, it's, it's very significant to me, and I'm very grateful for the award. That's a good setup to get into the growth of the operation with you partnering with your father some years ago, correct? Yes. Uh, it was like a year or so after college, uh, I came back and joined in a partnership with my father. We worked very well together. Uh, we each respected the other's opinion. If one felt strong enough, why the other would, would give. And uh, it helped me get into the operation, get started. I had very little to start with, and Dad wasn't. This was 79, so it was kind of in the teeth of the 80s. And so those were tough times. But uh, we made it work. As you grew up, was the farm then much like it is now, a diversified operation? Fairly so. Uh, we've always had livestock and crops. Um, you know, we're a little bigger now. Um, we still have that core of what Dad had put together, plus some rented ground. We've, we've gotten some of our own, and, and particularly in this last year, uh, several area farmers have uh, given up for one reason or the other, and so we've, we've gained a little ground there. The crops and the livestock tend to complement each other, uh, we think. Uh, it divides our time, commitment. We use the crops uh, residue to feed the cattle and, you know, anything, you know, little pasture or, or area will do the cattle and, and they're complementary enterprises for us. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. 
We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Hi, I'm Randy. And I'm Paul from PFI. We would like to personally invite you to stop by PFI, home of Boot Daddies. PFI is America's Western store covering over 50,000 square feet. Over 25,000 boots. Visit Saddle City with the largest selection of saddles and tack anywhere. A huge selection of hats at Big Spur Hat Company in PFI Town. And choose from the best brands of clothing and accessories for the entire family. PFI, located on Highway 65 at the Battlefield exit in Springfield. And I'm not kidding. This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Belinda, you are from Southwest Kansas originally. Yes, right? I grew up in Dodd City. Um, I actually didn't live on the farm. My mother was not very excited about that. So we lived in Dodd City, but my dad farmed outside of Dodd City. And then we also have land from Dodd City to the Colorado border. My grandfather, when ground was really cheap, bought up lots and lots and lots of farmland and they've kept it in the family. So what farming activities were prevalent on your father's operation? Um, he did mostly just wheat and he had some cattle in western Kansas. You don't have the luxury of as much um, moisture as you do here. So um, they just strictly did um, wheat and summer fallow and my brother also farmed with him also and they um, just did that and had some cattle that really weren't Huge herds, they were more like just pets. <laughs> <laughs> but they enjoyed that during the winter time. So, yeah. So, how did you end up in Rice County then? I came here to teach school, and um, the lady that was um, the minister's wife at the time taught at the same school I did and said, I have a guy you need to meet. And so that's how I got to Rice County. And I like it. My kids, I'm, this is a good place to raise kids on a farm. You continue to teach now. I do, yes, in Lyons. Kindergarten? Kindergarten. This is my uh, 24th year of teaching. I took 12 years off to stay with my kids, so which I don't regret at all. So, yeah. And that was, we made that decision because it was what was best for our kids. Let's talk of the operation here in Rice County then. It's grown to roughly 3,500 acres, and it is still Kindle crops and a few cattle, not necessarily on the side. But. Right, really as I look over the years, our numbers of cattle haven't changed that much. That's pretty much dictated by how much summer grass we have. Um, when I was young, we had a section of grass we had 120 cows on. Cows are much bigger now. I've got 80 and that's a little too much, so our, we have more pastures, but, uh, but about the same number of cows we've always had. And we've not gone too far outside of that until just recently. Uh, uh, Tanner and I bought some uh, calves, came out of Tulsa, and that's, we're feeding them. So that's a little different operation for us that we've not done in the past. Your cropping enterprises, though, they are diversified into themselves, right? When I grew up doing conventional farming, we had two-thirds of our crops in wheat. Now I would say a third or less than that is wheat now. Most recently because of the, the economics of wheat have not been very good. Uh, we've increased our, our soybeans dramatically. Uh, we still have uh, Milo is a good fit. Milo and corn, where I've got better ground like bottom land, that's where I put the corn. On the upland is where I put the Milo if I need that summer grass in the rotation. Uh, we pay a lot of attention to our rotations and what fits, what goes after the next crop and so on. Uh, we're obviously doing no-till and have been for, for uh, 17, 18 years now. And so we really pay attention to that. You mentioned no-till. You were involved at one time in a residue, crop residue alliance. You might talk about that, Kendall, a little bit. Well, that was, that was an interesting group. It was, it was kind of a fun group. Uh, 
we had very little structure. It was just like four or five guys in the county. It started just in the county. And we were assisted by the Natural Resources uh, Conservation Service and the county agent. It was very targeted specifically to reduce tillage and ultimately no-till. And then eventually we tied in with the McPherson County to the east of us. And uh, we'd still have the same number of 60 people show up at a field day. And then, then it got bigger and then, then it just dissipated <laughs> somehow. But it was an interesting group and it, it was a fun group and helped a lot of people in knowledge to really get into uh, uh, to the no-till practice. Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection, where we feature my renowned artwork, frontier military, and Native American artifacts. In the painting behind me is Scouting the Trail. Two scouts overlook the Smoky Hill River Valley, just north of the famous Monument Rocks, which are internationally renowned, as a column of 7th Cavalry parade north of the river. On this point, two scouts rode in a circle and there were 18 cartridges found up there and that meant that they usually were warning of impending danger and firing off their weapons. One of those weapons I feature in the gallery, a Spencer weapon, which we featured in the painting. Very unique and very honored to showcase this to you. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center, right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70, after all, is America's Main Street, and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day, and I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me. You know, the guys who are talking about the big elk they just bagged or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me. And they find just what I find here. Real people to serve them. There's history. There's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Belinda, as a teacher though, you have to appreciate what Kendall and likely yourself have involved yourselves with in as far as these ag days locally in, in schools, right? Right. He helps with the one that is sponsored by, I think, Farm Bureau and the NRCS. Um, I have in several years brought some of my kids out here, several, well, almost all the classes. One year we had 60 kids out here and took him to the farm and Bailey had a bucket calf that they all fed. Then we took him down to uh, where our cattle were and um, down by the river where the dugout is and they just thought that was fascinating. And the eldest Tanner, well he is partnering in the farm correctly, right? That's We're working on that. We haven't set up the documents and, and the official status yet, but uh, that is the goal. He's making decisions right along with me and I, I hope to be as good a father to him as mine father was to me and and uh, give him space and uh, to let him grow. And your middle youngster Logan perhaps also with designs on returning to the farm? I'm not sure we know <laughs> and and he doesn't know either. His major is ag tech management but he worked at a feed yard last summer and really enjoyed that aspect of agriculture and he's always been somebody who's loved animals so he may you know veer off into that. And then there's Bailey, who's still here at home in high school. Sure. What's, what are her aspirations? Well, she's kind of interested in um, animals and vet. She'd like to um, like shadow a vet clinic. That's kind of what she's thinking. Well, we sort of touched upon this to open with, but do want to close with this. Again, what the significance of this recognition is to each of you as a Master Farm family. Melinda, we'll start with you. We should be happy with being recognized on the efforts that we've done and the years that it's taken us to get here. Um, if you look back where we started 
you know, we've come a long, long ways. It's an honor and I'm, and I um, am happy that my kids are gonna be able to enjoy it too with me. Well, it is an honor and I, I know there's lots of people that are deserving. Um, you know, we're not that extraordinary special, but uh, you know, we have done a lot of things, not only with our farm, I mean, we've, we're not the biggest farm, but we've, we've progressed, we've, we've uh, I think are as uh, up to date and, and, and forward thinking as anyone. But I think uh, our community service, I think, really, really maybe is, is our strongest point in that we do, uh, we do look beyond ourselves and, and know that uh, uh, are very involved in our communities and, and uh, want to make it a better world. Kendall and Melinda Hodgson members of the Kansas Master Farm Family Class of 2017. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Heinen Brothers, a fourth-generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. Heinen Brothers Ag. Selling and servicing crop protection products, fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. Call today to learn about our extended term financing program, 800-760-4964, HeinenBrothersAg.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. As we get ready to start practicing our emergency brake stops, I'm just going to ask my horse to walk off. I've got my right hand in the center. I'm going to slide that left hand down, and I'm just going to lift straight up, and I'm going to hold that pressure on until my horse stops, all four feet, and then softens. Then I'll, I'll drop it out of my hand like it's a hot potato. Then I'll ask him to walk off again. I'll slide my right hand down. I'm going to lift straight up. I'm going to hold till he stops and softens. You can see he kind of moved into that pressure a little bit. If he wants to move in, that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to change where I'm pulling. I'm going to hold that pressure till he softens. And I didn't really like what he did there, so I'm going to soften him back off of it. So here's the steps to it again. As I'm walking off, I'll slide that left hand down that rein, and I'll just lift up. And I'll let him find that stop. You can see he kind of turned to the left. He was seeing if that was the right answer at that point. So. I'm not going to get critical of him there. I'm going to say, hey, great job in looking to find the answer. We always want our horses searching out the answers. We're going to bring Elizabeth in here in just a second, and we're going to work on slide not changing that pivot hand and sliding down and getting that emergency brake stop. You're going to move your left hand to the center of your reins and slide your right hand down. Okay, so that's one of the things that I was kind of talking about earlier. So, and that is our young riders get to wanting to keep their hands in one spot and not sliding them. So the exercise that we're going to work on is I'm going to slide one hand to the center of my reins, then I'm going to slide my other hand down the rein, and I'm going to pull it into my pocket, okay? So there you go, really good. Now just change your center hand, slide your other hand down. Boom, there you go, great job. Change your center hand, slide your other hand down. What I found by being really conscious about changing that center hand and then sliding your other hand 
is it gets us to where we're not pulling on our horses all the time. When we get our hands out here like this, a lot of times we get to pulling, and we don't want to pull on our horses. We want to guide our horses. So just ask Mojo to walk off, Elizabeth. All right, put one hand in the center. Now slide your other hand down and put it in your pocket. You're gonna hold it in your pocket till all four feet are still and he softens. That means he puts slack in the reins. Release right there. Drop it like it's a hot potato. All right, ask him to walk off again. Change your center hand. And when I'm doing this drill, I'm not that worried about where my horses are going. I'm in an arena and slide it into your pocket. There you go. All right, walk off again. And I also try to make sure that I'm alternating sides. That's, that way I'm always trying to get my horse balanced. Keep my horse balanced. There you go. Really good. As soon as he puts slack in that rein, release. Good. Walk him off again and ask him again. All right, slide that hand down and bring it into your pocket. And you can see as she does that, Mojo has a tendency to want to brace just a little bit. That's just part of it. It's a... Uh, it's going to take us a little bit of time to get him softer, and we just have to keep working at this. And I would, uh, if we were in a lesson right now, we would do this at a walk, a trot, and a lope, and this may be the only thing we covered in today's lesson. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 miles an hour. The wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulders sure hurt. I kept waiting and it, it didn't get better. And so I went to an orthopedic surgeon and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. And I, I farm and ranch by myself. It's not going to work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And, I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. Got down there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by 11.30, the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes, and then injected it in my shoulders, and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron. With American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide radio and TV. The all new Better Horses Network. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Marketing calves today seems less related to the traditional handshake, observation, and trust. But relationships are still important. Well, we've certainly had an opportunity to introduce technology to feeder cattle marketing, which has made the platform in which we do business much more rapid. And as a result, I think marketing has become less personalized uh, and simply more based on convenience and volume and uh, a very limited amount of time that we offer a lot of cattle for sale. Although buyers might not find enough details, the internet, video, and cell phone alerts help them find cattle that fit commodity needs. Those are all very positive, but at the same time it can still be very difficult to know which cattle actually have value uh, based on uh, the genetic inputs and the management at the ranch that the producers are putting in. So we need to clarify those things better in the future. Dykstra says new and developing info technology lets sellers share details on expected progeny differences, or EPDs, in context. Sharing more than simply the source of the genetics, for instance, but actually helping to quantify what the numbers really mean by using percentile ranks for EPDs and dollar value indexes, for instance, of the bulls that sired the cattle, I think would help the buyer to uh, be reassured that there's more value in a set of calves. Along with nutrition and health details, that kind of information not only assures accurate pricing, it also allows accurate feeding to bring out the best in the cattle. As much as greater detail helps, it won't replace the human connections. I think the best opportunity to merchandise feeder cattle and build a brand for a cow-calf operation is simply those personal relationships. It may sound too simple, 
But in my experience, those relationships pay off far more than any uh, word of mouth or advertising that might be done. Certainly more than what can be written on paper is a reputation of uh, trustworthiness and a quality product from one human to another uh, is, is almost priceless. I'm Bob Cervera. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.